When you get deeper into Rust, you start realizing pretty quickly that the built-in traits are the central element that makes everything run smoothly, from memory management to synchronization between threads. So let us expand our knowledge today by looking at some of the most important conversion traits that Rust has to offer. I'm talking about from, try from, from string as ref and deref. Using these traits in the right way will make your program flow much more nicely and lead to clean, simple to use APIs. In this video, I'll walk you through a simple example where we'll implement these traits on a circle struct and its friends, so you can see these traits in action. My name is Max, I am your host at Green Tea Coding, and now let's get started. If you ever needed to convert one type into another seamlessly and safely, Rust's from and into traits handle exactly that without unnecessary boilerplate. So let's see how these work in our circle struct. We start out with our very simple struct. Of course, we could use struct literal syntax to instantiate a circle object, but that doesn't seem like a lot of fun. Instead, we would like to create it from a U32, which will be used as the circle radius. This seems like a safe operation as unsigned integers cannot be negative. Rust has a built-in trait that is designed for lossless, infallible conversions to own type, the from trait. We can implement from U32 for circle, this only requires the definition of a function from that takes a u32 value and returns a self, which in this context is of course a circle. The function body is pretty self-explanatory. Once the trait is implemented, we can now use circle from to convert a u32 into a circle. But that's not all. Because we implemented from u32 for circle, Rust automatically implements the counterpart of the from trait, which is called into. In this case, this means that into circle for u32 exists without requiring us to write any additional line of code. So we can call dot into on any u32 to create a circle. However, because there might be multiple types that a u32 can be converted into, we need type annotations to clarify this operation for the compiler. Another pretty lengthy way of creating a circle is now the explicit call of into circle into u32. But you don't see that very much due to its verbosity. At this point, you might not be super stoked about the from and into traits, but let me show you how to create very ergonomic function APIs with the into trait. Assume we have a function that takes ownership of a circle and returns its area. Let's define a generic type t with a trait bound of into circle. Instead of accepting a circle, we can now accept any t that implements into circle. With only a single line of extra code, we convert whatever type we got to an actual circle and then compute the area. This change now allows us to call the circle area function with an actual circle, but also with a u32, as it can be converted to a circle. This makes your functions more user-friendly and allows the calling code to be a lot less verbose. So to sum up from and into here, you saw that into u for t is auto-implemented when from t for u exists. And the conversion of from t for a t has a blanket implementation that compiles to a no-op, so this is zero cost. Therefore, we always should prefer implementing from as it automatically enables into. From and into are used for lossless, infallible conversions, and they're also very useful for error handling, because the question mark operator automatically converts between error types via from. Into, on the other hand, is very useful as a trait bound on generic function arguments. For example, when a function should be able to take any argument that is convertible into a string, then it should take a t which is bounded by into string. From and into are great when conversions are always valid, but what if they can fail? Well, that's where try from and try into come in, which we'll take a look at next. Try from and try into are core traits used for fallible conversions. Unlike from, these traits allow you to gracefully handle cases where a conversion might fail. In our circle example, we want to convert from an f32 using try from. Because floating point values can be negative, we need to make sure not to accidentally create a circle with a negative radius. Implementing the try from trait requires us to define the function try from, which is very similar to from but returns a result rather than a self directly. 
Self error is an associated type which defines the type of error the result can hold. To keep it simple, we could use a static str here, but you could also use your custom error type here. The implementation then just checks for a positive value and returns an error otherwise. In terms of usage, it is the exact same as with the from trait, but you have to deal with the result first. And as you would expect, implementing try from gives you try into for free. So we saw now that try from and try into are very, very similar to from and into. And therefore, try into u for t is also auto implemented when you implement try from t for u. Therefore, you should always prefer implementing try from as it automatically enables try into. The only difference to from and into is that try from and try into are used for conversions that might fail. And try into just like into is very useful in generic functions to give more flexibility to the caller. There is one more owned conversion I would like to talk about today, and that is parsing an object from a string. Converting types from string is a requirement seen so often that Rust is a separate trait for this task called from str. The from string trait is your go to for parsing values from strings. By implementing from string for our circle, we enable a very natural way to convert user input directly into our type. This is especially useful in scenarios like command line applications or web servers where you need to validate and parse data on the fly. Essentially, it ties the parsing logic neatly with your type's validation rules. Implementing the from string trait requires us to define one function, like with try from, this operation is fallible, and so the function returns a result. Self error is the associated type here that needs to be defined. In this case, we rely on parsing a single f32 from the string and then fall back to our try from implementation to avoid creating circles with negative radius. Map error deals with the error emerging from the string parsing. Once from string is implemented, we can now use dot parse on any string to try to create a circle object from it. Note that there's no direct inverse trait like into string for from string. If you want to convert your custom structs to strings, you probably want to implement the display trait instead. As a wrap up for from string, we saw that from string for t enables parse into a type t, and that parsing itself is always a fallible conversion. So from string is used for converting strings into structured types. Well, this will do for traits covering own conversion. Next up, we have two traits that are used for borrowing. But before we get into that, let's quickly talk about taking ownership once more. Ownership of your future. Learning is a lifelong journey and to me understanding more about the technologies that drive our modern world is a deeply fulfilling endeavor. It was not even two years ago that machine learning fundamentally changed our profession, basically overnight. Using AI is one thing, but as tech-savvy individuals we shouldn't just be naive users. I started to educate myself on machine learning, neural networks, and generative AI. And this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in. Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and of course, AI. There's a lot of resources for learning new skills, but what I like about Brilliant is that learning is not a one-way street where you're just fed information. Instead, Brilliant fosters my critical thinking skills with an interactive method. This builds problem-solving skills, which are way more relevant in real life than just having memorized a few keywords. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash greenteacoding or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. But now, let's get back to Rust's borrowing conversion traits. To start this chapter off, let's assume we have the necessity to create circles which have their center position offset from the origin. But because we don't want to touch our circle struct itself, or because the struct is defined in an external crate, we create a wrapper called circle with position that holds a circle alongside a center point. The problem we are facing now is that all of our nice utility functions, like the one that calculates the area of a circle, accept reference to a circle not to our new circle with position struct. And while calling them with a circle was straightforward, we always need to access the circle member when we are working with a circle with position. This might be inconvenient at best, but impossible at worst if the circle member is private and the struct is defined in another module. But not to worry, 
Rust has a trait that will save us here, as ref. We can implement as ref to circle for our circle with position. The implementation is really simple in this case. This allows us to modify our utility function to take a generic type T, which is limited to types that implement as ref circle by a trait bound. Inside the function, we then use shadowing to create a reference via the asref method. This then allows us to call the function with a reference to our circle with position. Note that in order to still work with the original circle, asref for circle needs to be implemented for the circle struct. So let us wrap up asref. Well, actually, it's not only asref, but also asmute, its brother. As ref converts from a immutable reference to self into an immutable reference to a T, which is a normal borrow, while as mute converts from immutable reference to self into a mutable reference to T, so a mutable borrow. Otherwise, the syntax is very, very similar. These are lightweight, non consuming conversions, and both as ref and as mute are very useful in generic functions to give more flexibility to the caller, just as we saw with into and try into. Note that as ref is used for cheap reference to reference conversions and as mute as well. So if you have anything that is computationally intensive, please use something else. As ref and as mute also must not fail, so they're infallible like from and into. Moving on to our last trade today, which is deref. The main use case for the deref trade is for more ergonomic use of boxed values. Let's set out with this very simple circle box. Again, our functionality is designed to work on circles directly, which makes working with a boxed circle rather cumbersome, as we always explicitly need to access the wrapped circle. Entering the deref trait. When implementing this trait, we have to define the associated target type, as well as the deref function. Once completed, we can now use a boxed circle in places where a normal circle reference is expected. As opposed to all the other traits we saw today, the deref trait works from the shadows. The deref function is automatically called when the compiler sees that the conversion from a circle box to a circle reference is required, making our lives a lot easier. Our final trait today, deref, also has a brother called deref mute. Both of them have an associated type target, which allows implicit conversion from a reference to T to a reference to U where U is the target type. Both of these traits allow ergonomic use, which you could also call syntactic sugar, for smart pointers like box of T and an RC of T, which is a reference counted smart pointer. An idiomatic use case would be that it makes a box of T behave like a reference T or a mutable reference of T. And that about wraps up our deep dive into Rust's conversion traits. Today we explored how to leverage from, try from, from string, as ref and deref to write cleaner and safer code. I hope this tutorial has given you some fresh ideas on how to build more ergonomic APIs and handle conversions in your projects. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Rust content. And let me know in the comments down below if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with Green Tea Coding.